Hey everyone, thanks for having me. My name's Camille, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the learnings and challenges from designing for a market completely different from your own. Why is this relevant for you? Most of today's top tech companies for UXers are growing on a global scale, which means that localization is becoming more and more important in order to break into markets with different needs and expectations than our own. In the past year and a half at Booking.com, I've been lucky enough to work on a project called Booking Local, which is Booking's attempt at creating a completely localized travel app for Indonesia. One thing to understand, though, is that we've been building this from Amsterdam, which is 11,357 kilometers away from Indonesia. And that's come with a lot of challenges and learnings that I'm hoping to share with you today. So before we jump into the presentation, let me give you a bit of background about me and my journey around the globe. To start with, I'm American, and I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. When I was studying in university, I got to study abroad in Brisbane, Australia, where I worked as a junior designer while going to school. This is actually the very first time that Indonesia came onto my radar, American geography, because basically, all my Australian friends were going there for their honeymoons. Bali is like the number one travel destination for Australians. So immediately after finishing university, I started working at Booking.com in Amsterdam, where I was not only exposed to designing for the European market, but also for designing on a global scale. Booking.com is known for using A-B testing and small step optimization methods to become the global entity that they are today. But the funny thing is that even though booking is known in places like Southeast Asia, it's not the travel app of choice. And knowing this, they created a new track at booking called the Next Billion Travelers Track, because they knew they weren't doing as well in these kind of Southeast Asian countries. If you guys recognize the name, it's actually because it's inspired by the Google's Next Billion Users Initiative. Whether it's targeting internet users or travelers, basically, these initiatives target markets that are catching up to the Western world in terms of internet, technology, and economy. So that is actually where my product, Booking Local, comes in. Let me start by first answering the question, what is Booking Local? Booking Local is like Booking.com. It's used to find and book hotels. The biggest difference, though, is that booking local, you can only book hotels in Indonesia, and you can only book as an Indonesian user, so only domestic travel. The entire site is in the local language, Bahasa Indonesia, which actually was super challenging for me. And now I know a bit of Bahasa, but it's all about how to book hotels, so it's not really relevant. Another thing is that we have Booking.com hotels on the site, but we also have hotels that are Booking Local hotels only. We have an entire autonomous marketing and operations team in Jakarta, Indonesia, that sources these, hotel that sources these hotels for us. So I answered, what is Booking Local? But the question is, why Booking Local? So for starters, Booking.com is actually not localized at all for the Indonesian market. The first thing is that the UI is like nothing that the user would expect to see there. But we'll get into that in a second. But secondly, on a deeper level, we actually don't offer a lot of the payment methods that are used in Indonesia. So let's say even if the booker gets through the funnel and goes to book a hotel, a lot of times they can't anyway, because a majority of them actually don't have credit cards, and we don't offer any of the localized payment methods. The second thing is the perception of Booking.com in Indonesia. It's a super price-sensitive market, and Booking.com is actually seen as a luxurious brand where you go if you want to book international travel. Also, because of their free cancellation policy, we learned that a lot of people are booking hotels on Booking.com for their free cancellation, using it to get their travel visas, and then canceling and booking somewhere else. So we answered, what is Booking Local? We answered, why Booking Local? And the last question is, 
why Indonesia? Why not somewhere else? So according to Google's A Year in Search Insight report, Indonesia is the largest and fastest growing internet economy in Southeast Asia. The number of people accessing internet in Indonesia has grown from 29% in 2013 to 56% in 2017. And daily internet usage among those with internet access has increased from 49% in 2013 to 79% in 2017. This means everyone's spending money online. They are shopping online, sharing their lives online, buying tickets online, booking their hotels online, and everything in between. Meaning that is, it is the prime place to be as a digital product. But unfortunately for Booking.com, we've got some stiff competition in the market. Over the last seven years, a few local players have risen to the top, with the number one local player being Traveloka. They've been engaged in a pricing war with the other local players and has given them the biggest share of the market. How do you win a pricing war? Well, basically, you throw money at the customer in whatever way, shape, or form. This could be discounts, deals, coupons, giving away free hotel nights, or even just straight up giving money to the customer. So we were already way behind with Traveloka constantly kind of giving out free hotels, et cetera. It's a really, really great time to be a consumer in Indonesia right now, clearly, because everyone's throwing money at you, but not the best time to be, as, be a business. Most of the businesses up here, with the exception of booking and Agoda, are actually losing money in an effort to win the market. But Booking said, you know what, we still want to try to win this market, and we know that small step optimizations aren't going to cut it, so we're going to create a brand new product, Booking Local, and our team of six people was given the challenge to win Indonesia. So this is where we enter phase one of the product, and it is super, super important to note that all of this was before anyone on my team had ever visited Indonesia before. So we were given a few briefs and assumptions to kind of start with for our MVP first version of the product. The first assumption about our guests in Indonesia was that, OK, even though they have internet now, it's still super slow. So we have to have the fastest loading site possible. This meant that for me as the designer, I couldn't play with any images, animations, et cetera, et cetera. It had to be so minimalistic. The next assumption was this use case that we were given of the last minute booker. So basically, in the capital city, Jakarta, Indonesia, this is actually where the central business district is. And a lot of people drive to work, and it actually can take up to three or four hours to get to work and also to get home. So we had this use case of, OK, this person, they just finished work. They don't want to go home, so they just book a hotel for the night and they don't need any fancy details about this hotel. They want it to be as cheap as possible. They want to book it as fast as possible. And basically, they just need a bed to sleep in and a shower and Wi-Fi. And these things, we were kind of told by the business that, OK, you're building for this guest. But we also had to build an app for hotel owners as well. So the first assumption that we were given was that these hotel owners actually have no idea how to use a booking management system. So you need to make this as simple as possible. And secondly, if they do use a booking management system, or if they're willing to adopt one, they have really old phones. So we also had to make this as simple and minimal as possible. So to summarize, this was the first version of the guest app. And the hypothesis that we ran with was that last minute, budget bookers want to go through the book process as fast as possible with low data and internet usage and on mobile only. And you'll see here that it's just a one-click book process. There's not even hotel details. You basically put in your name and phone number, and the hotel was booked. And on the hotel owner side, the hypothesis that we went with was that budget property owners want the simplest mobile experience possible for managing hotel bookings, inventory, and listing. So 
This is where our first reality check came in. So pic picture this. We just finished these two apps. We did them in a manner of a couple of weeks. We actually started as a hackathon project. And they finally decided to let us go out to Indonesia, sense the market, and test this stuff for the first time. It is a 14-hour flight from Amsterdam to Indonesia. So I was exhausted. And Indonesia is the hottest, most humid environment I had ever been in. And as an American, I was suffering without air conditioning. But despite this, I was still super excited to meet the team. And so we, we get off the plane, we drop our bags off at the hotel, and we head to the local office, where I walk in, and the first thing I see on the whiteboard is this design sucks. I was shook. I didn't even believe it, to be honest. I was like, they must be talking about some, something else. Like, it's obviously Traveloka or whatever that they're talking about here. Because I designed for the user that I was given and the brief that I was given. But the thing is, the brief that I was given was completely wrong. I mean, none of these guys in Amsterdam knew what the Indonesian user wanted. You know, this was just a complete assumption, and they told us to build something as fast as possible, and that was that. Another really important key thing to know about this time is that we, we had a team in Jakarta, Indonesia, who were giving us feedback this whole time. But the product manager at the time, due to fear of scope creep, because we had to work so fast, was withholding all of the feedback from us. So I never even received any of the insights from the local team. And let me tell you, they were ready to fight me. I was just some random girl over in Amsterdam across the world who they were giving design feedback to, and I was not listening. But that wasn't the case at all. I made it super clear to them that I never got any of their <laughs> design feedback Please give it to me. Help me out here. Let's create a new version. And they quickly forgave me. They, they had kind of like staged an intervention. Like they all got me into a room and sat down. And they were like, we need to talk about the design. But they quickly forgave me when they realized I had no idea what was going on. And from then on, we actually completely opened communication channels to collaborate with them on every single version and every single feature, et cetera, from there on out. So after we met the local team, we then spent the next couple days um, user testing the product with actual users. And of course, this only continued to reinforce what the local team had already told us. So I'll just remind you, on the guest side, what we showed the user, super, super minimalist. It was the absolute quickest process possible. Barely any extra images, no animations, super subdued color palette. As I said before, there wasn't even a hotel page. You would click Search. You would just see the list of hotels, click Book, put your name and phone number in, and that was that. You could add a coupon, and then you had to pay at the hotel. Now, let me tell you what the user expected to see. So there are some key differences here. And these are the leading travel players in the market. There are a few patterns, such as super bright, fun colors, a super app. You can't see in the first two, but there were, their, their apps had animations, guys. Whoever told us they had no internet was lying, because they have these really advanced super apps that you can book everything in one place, flights, hotels, et cetera. And you could also, there was a huge focus on deals and promotions. The thing is that the app that we showed them was so fundamentally different from what you see up here, they actually thought we were fraud. Like, so Indonesia has a huge problem with fraud, actually. And so this didn't really help our case. They actually went through the book process on our phone and was like, is my hotel even booked? They said they would never use it. They would think we were just some site to mine data and get their name and phone number. Um, and we were 
nothing like what they wanted to see at all. So at this point, it was back to the drawing board, but we had the local team on our side this time. So it was time to completely collaborate and immerse ourselves in the culture. So as I said before, feedback channels were completely open. We created a completely open Slack group. Um, we had collaborative mood boards that we used. We worked with a team to do an analysis of the popular brands in the market and really the reasoning behind them. And we did a lot more interviews, surveys, user testing, and we actually trained the team in Jakarta, Indonesia on some sort of like uh, quick and dirty user testing methods so they could always go and test one of my new designs or whatever so we could get really quick feedback. So at this point, we knew that we couldn't release <laughs> what we had already done because we didn't want to ruin our brand name and be seen as fraud. So created a, we created a super quick fix with just some of the learnings that we did. There was still a long way to go. Um, and our hypothesis at this point was that bookers require a longer book process, since we were seen as fraud, and trust messaging in order to be seen as a trustworthy and valid product. And some of the features that we added in the span of a month, month and a half, where we did a rebrand. You'll see my attempt at understanding Southeast Asian UI. And uh, we added a hotel page, a three-step book process, trust messaging throughout the site, and also the actual ability to sort and filter. Since we learned that it's not the cheapest hotel they want, it's the biggest promo that they want. So at the end of phase one, I have three key lessons for you to take away. First of all, Go to the country you're using. Go to the country you are designing for to truly understand your users. Two, start gathering customer feedback as early as possible in the process. And three, make sure you collaborate with the experts in the market because good design is definitely not the same thing everywhere in the world. So here's where we enter phase two of the product, which was after the Indonesia trip. So design thinking actually ended up playing a huge role from this point forward in the strategy of how we moved forward with the product. So for anyone who just needs a quick refresher, design thinking is a mindset that helps you keep the user at the center of everything that you do. You start the phase by empathizing with the user, defining their problem, coming up with ideas for how to solve that problem, coming up with prototypes, quickly testing, validating ideas, invalidating ideas, and then implementing the ones that work. One really easy way to apply design thinking is in a design workshop. So we actually used the Google Design Sprint method, but shortened it into a two-day workshop where we only focused on the first few phases of design thinking, empathize, define, and ideate. So we actually took the entire team to do this workshop, which is super important to gain buy-in from everyone. And we looked at a snapshot of our target market. We went over our user persona and what we knew, really understood our user needs, continued to analyze the apps in the market. And from there, we quickly sketched ideas, did some paper prototypes, wireframes, et cetera. So here's just an example of some of the sketches that we did. And we all ended up coming out with this wireframe where we explored also this super app idea. Uh, we, we knew that search near me was still an important uh, factor. It just wasn't about finding the absolute cheapest hotel near me. Um, and we were super excited to then test it. So I spent the next few weeks creating an actual fleshed out prototype. And one thing that I want to say is that when we left the design workshop, we were pumped. We were like, we are going to break the market, you guys. Like, this is going to be the best thing ever. So, so one idea that we had was, first of all, Instagram is like the number one used app in Indonesia. On top of having an intervention with me about the design of the product, the team also had an intervention with me on my Instagram profile because it wasn't cohesive enough. And th they had this whole calculated way of doing Instagram in that market. So we were like, OK, Instagram is the number one used app there. So clearly, we need to design our app as similar to Instagram and integrate Instagram wherever we can. 
So we used like hashtag search, we added emojis for the reviews, we added Instagram influencer testimonials on the homepage, we included like lots of Instagram feed style photos, et cetera, et cetera. And we were super excited uh, just because we knew how much they already loved that app. Obviously, user testing is always enlightening. And so this is where our next reality check came in. So all of that Instagram stuff, yeah, they didn't want any of it. Um, one thing that was really funny was when they saw the Instagram testimonials from the Instagram influencers, they were like, we would never trust this. They're obviously being paid to say something nice about these hotels. Makes sense. We didn't see it, but it makes sense. And all of that extra stuff that we thought would be super innovative wasn't even really recognized by the users, or they didn't care. What they did want, however, were the slightly improved versions of features that they already expected. So search near me, more deals and promotions, having a content and inspiration section. None of these things were particularly innovative, but it was what they wanted, and this was super surprising to us. So at the end of the second phrase, phase, I have three key learnings for you to take away. Design sprints aren't a magical process that will get it right the first time, but they are a great way to come up with and test ideas and invalidate ideas super quickly to gather learnings. And lastly, you can never know enough about your user. So here's where we enter product phase three and where we are today. So at this point, we continued design thinking because it truly never ends. And we took our learnings back to Amsterdam with us and continued to iterate and create the next few versions of the design. Everything that we validated, we built an MVP of to launch to users, and we continue to user test it again. And we still, to this day, continue to test every few months with the MVP versions. And if we see that we want, need more improvements, then we continue to improve the MVP to get to the point where the user, it's what the user wants. So this is where we are today. We're live. Well, we've been live <laughs> up since the second version. But we're like actually getting bookings. So super exciting. We continued to implement a lot of new features. We offered localized payment methods. We have deals and promotions. We now have a team in Indonesia that has grown to an entire branding and marketing team and operations that go and source low prices from hotels and were used to kind of test really quick ideas in the market, which is super cool. So in conclusion, I have three points that you should take away. First, design is subjective. There is no universal design standard, and what is visually appealing to one market is not to another. Second, humility is key. Just approach any new market knowing that you know nothing, and please, I will once again emphasize, visit whatever country you're working on to truly understand your users' needs and expectations. And lastly, fulfill the basic user needs and then innovate after that. Yeah, time for questions. Hello, Camille. Hello. Thank you. So many questions. Um, so, I don't know how to phrase these, <laughs> some of these questions. We want to know about um, sort of the early on in your story, you mentioned a product manager who withheld some information. And there was some mysterious team who gave your team a bunch of assumptions. And we want to know what happened to those people <laughs> after they were faced with the truth. <laughs> OK, what, what, so. <laughs> what, what can you, like, well, I guess this is part of a company culture and building trust on, you know, within an organization. Why don't we talk about how, how did things work out with the person who with, withheld the feedback? What can you say about that? He's gone now. OK. Gone. 
Okay. Um, he left of his own accord. Don't okay. worry. Okay. 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 Uh, um, and what can you say about the team who supplied all those assumptions? Because you came back with a not just a little bit no, but a super hell no. Yeah. 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 So how did that go over? What What was that like? Yeah, you mean like when I arrived or like well, after they gave me the, the feedback? You quickly found that the truth that you were given was not right. reality. So how did, that, how did that feedback resonate elsewhere in the company? Yeah, elsewhere in the company, I mean, we're still kind of a... We, have, we share learnings throughout Booking.com, but we really had to focus on repairing the relationship between our Booking local team and the team in Indonesia. Because, yeah, they thought we just weren't listening to them, which ah. wasn't the case. Um, but like I said, we completely opened up communication channels. We now fly them out for the design workshops that we do. We fly out there to do more user testing. Um, so it's more about repairing the relationship with them and making sure that even though they aren't designers, as you said before, not everyone is a musician, mm -hmm. they are now completely involved in every single step of the design process. Cool. Um, uh, Anonymous wants to know about the uh, competitive analysis, perhaps, as part of this process. Mm -hmm. And just how did the team, uh, was that part of the team's process or? What yeah. can you say about competitive analysis? Yeah, so part of user testing, we tested our product, but we also tested the competitors' products as well. So it was actually pretty much unanimous. Everyone in the everyone in the the market uses Traveloka. That because they give them money, basically, mm -hmm. but also because they're a good app. And what we did was we not only had them go through Traveloka for us, but we also had them share you know, what they love about Traveloka, what they don't like about Traveloka, what can be improved, why do they use it all the time, et cetera, et cetera. And so part of our user testing was always to test these other products as well in the market. Right, so what I'm hearing you say is that it's not enough to just copy what you think is working in the market, but to test those things as well so you can learn from them that way and then apply that to your process. Right, well, and yeah. it's all about making it better and putting your own spin on it, right? Because they're still going to have pain points even if it's the, no, the most used travel app in Indonesia, for example. Got it. Um, we'd also like to hear a little bit about um, the language part. Uh, um, uh, did you work with an Indonesian content strategist? I noticed in the last prototypes, you, it, it, was, it wasn't in English. Yeah. So <laughs> as a designer on the project, how do, you, how do you work with that? Yeah, so actually for a long time, we didn't have a UX copywriter or anything. So I would just write the copy in English, like my best guess, I'm not a copywriter. Mm -hmm. And then we had a translator, actually. He wasn't even a UX copywriter or translator or anything. Initially, it was just some poor guy who had to translate all of our, our pieces of copy. But as we continued to grow, we got more funding from the company, et cetera. Uh, we actually now have a dedicated UX copywriter for all of the copy. And we now have like uh, content writers as well, blog writers, et cetera. And they're all in the office in Jakarta, Indonesia. Wow, cool. Yeah. So the, the team grew a bit in it capability. It grew quite a bit, yeah. Cool. Well, thank you for the talk thank and you. the story. Thank you.